Hey everyone, welcome to Can't Afford to Record, the YouTube channel where we figure out the art of audio production together. So I bought a Kemper and I have to say I had to learn a lot. I really, really went through the ringer on this one and I wanted to make a video and explain what exactly I figured out and what I wish I knew before I bought the Kemper. So I really hope this video helps anyone else out there that's thinking about buying a Kemper and just wants to hear a really honest opinion. There's a lot to say and there's probably loads I won't even make it into this video but I'm going to do my best to put this into different sections of topics about the Kemper and sort of what I went through and what I've realized and what I've learned. Um, starting off with the price. Kempers are expensive and I knew I couldn't afford a brand new one so I went and got a used one. And there's limited used Kempers in Canada, okay? Just trust me. Now don't get me wrong, there might be more on Facebook Marketplace but I wanted to go on Reverb. I decided if I was going to spend a lot of money on this piece of equipment then I wanted to get something that has a little bit of buyer protection with it in case something was wrong. I've never owned a Kemper before so I didn't really know what to expect and after weeks and weeks and weeks of looking eventually this one came up for sale. It is a power rack and I had also decided that I wanted a powered version of the Kemper. I wanted to have the option of powering um, a cabinet or anything that I needed to and so I just decided yeah I'm gonna go the full nine yards on this I'm gonna get the best most equipped Kemper I can get. The other thing is that it came in a flight case as well this came from someone that was using it in a touring band so I was really happy with that that they'd have a bit of protection and I could keep it in its flight case and use that also to get from gig to gig whenever I might do a gig. That flight case is wicked heavy I moved it to a around at a few band practices and actually did a gig with it and I have to say it's just like moving a JCM 800 head it's like not really all that transportable especially for someone that's not really touring right now so it just didn't make sense and this Kemper isn't that heavy so I think I'm gonna look into getting a nice soft rack case for my Kemper um and that'll be way more transportable and just work way better for me. My plan was to run it through the Marshall 2x12, which you can't see right now. It's hidden at the back there. But that was my plan. I was like, okay, I don't have to buy anything else now. I've got a powered Kemper. I can run it through my actual guitar cab. That'll be awesome. So the Kemper arrived. It came with loads of profiles, which I was also really excited about. Probably around 2,000 of them. I thought this is going to be great. I've, I'm gonna have every tone I could possibly ever want and uh, I'm set, I'm done, I'm golden. So I plugged it into my 2x12 and I started going through the profiles and I was like, okay, cool, yeah, th that one sounds good, I think, and, and okay, I, I really actually don't like that sound, and okay, and I was thinking, okay, wait, I'm not gonna go through 2,000 profiles now, just play around with it for a bit, get used to learning how it all works, you do have to kind of get used to knowing how it's how the chain is on this Kemper and and you know, how to add reverbs and delays etc and uh, I'll be really honest uh, I was starting to think I made a big mistake here I wasn't really finding anything I liked on this Kemper I didn't really find any sounds there were a few and I kind of convinced myself of oh yeah this is really really good and there were actually a couple of really really good sounds I was like yes this could be my sound I love this but I was starting to think, what is the big deal? What am I missing here? I must have something wrong. And it suddenly hit me that perhaps I'm not really using the Kemper to its full potential. I'm putting it through my Marshall 2x12, which to me is like, that makes sense. It's a real guitar speaker and I want to use these really great amp sounds. But when you're putting it through a, uh, a regular guitar cab and you turn off the cabinet button the Kemper's being extremely clever it's like removing that 
that that imprint of a cat of the of the guitar cab and saying oh you want to use yours okay no problem but it, you're not really it's it's weird it's it's being very clever and it's amazing that it can do that but when you start to think about it it kind of makes sense why some of these amazing sounds and some of these amazing profiles you've read about actually don't sound the way you thought they might so all of a sudden buyer's remorse is starting to really sink in for me i was thinking okay what have i done i've just spent so much money on this and i don't think this is for me but then I started looking into FRFR monitors. I kind of started to get the idea that that would give me the sound of these profiles. It'd give me the speaker that it was originally captured with back. It'd give me that microphone sound that it was originally captured with. So I picked up a Yamaha DXR12. People in the community seem to really like them. I think more people like the 10 inch, but there was a 12 inch version. And I just thought, yep, you know what? It's down the road for me. I'm going to buy it. And honestly, that's where everything changed. I realized that this is the sound of a Kemper. I'm hearing what was originally intended to be heard, which is the captured amp, the captured speaker, the captured microphone. Everything started to sound a lot better to me. This is how I, w I want to hear the Kemper. And I say that because a lot of people do prefer running the Kemper through a real guitar cab. So that's just a different preference. It's just a different opinion. And I wish that that made sense for me, but it just seemed like actually it doesn't and a PA monitor is going to be fine. So now that I finally got my monitor situation figured out and I actually like how the Kemper sounds, it was time to look into recording and I went down this rabbit hole too some people like to use the line outs some people like to use the spdif cable i went through both options and it just turns out that using a spdif cable is way better for me because it means i can leave it connected to my um my interface all the time so whenever i'm inspired to play i can just literally route it to the right place and go i don't have to take cables in and out and it just seemed like the best and ideal situation for me i really recommend when you're picking your sound for recording make sure you are hearing what you want to record in context so either pick it on your um studio monitors because that's obviously what you're going to be hearing back straight away on or maybe use headphones i actually prefer to just plug headphones into my kemper really dial in the sound that I'm after and then when I've recorded it I listen to it back and it's the exact sound that I chose so I know that everything's good. If you're going to do any recording don't rely on hearing it on your monitor, rely on hearing it on what you're actually going to be listening uh, your recording back on. Kemper profiles, I don't think there's any other way to learn this apart from when you buy a Kemper you just end up learning this. Not all Kemper profiles are made the same and it's just worth knowing that. There are some um, Kemper profiles I've paid for that actually I didn't like. And there are some Kemper profiles I've got for free and I absolutely adore and they are my go-to sound. I think the most jarring thing about the profiler is its amount of options. You can literally go from a sparkly, glassy, fender clean tone to an orange rocker verb or an AC30 like in a split second right and it takes a while to get used to because every time you play a new profile you are convinced that that's the one you need and that's the best sound you've ever heard and the one that you played 10 seconds ago is now terrible and that probably is not the case just be aware that you're listening to all these different sounds with probably no context Okay, so the next one is always going to sound better, etc. You're going to just have to make your way through the profiles nice and slowly. I honestly thought I would want all 2000 of these profiles on my Kemper. In actual fact, I've got 14 on here now and I still don't use all of those. I use about three of them. Be pretty ruthless. If you don't like the profile, just get rid of it or just don't load it onto the actual profiler. Keep it in your library if you ever want to come back to it. I sometimes um, favorite ones that I think I might want to come back to. But just be really honest with yourself. Am I going to use this sound? Is this sound inspiring to me? If it's not, just don't put it on your profiler because, um, yeah, you're just not going to use it.
So if I was to buy a Kemper again with the knowledge that I have now, what would I do? I can tell you absolutely 100% I would not buy a powered Kemper. I was convinced I needed a powered Kemper. I wanted the full nine yards. I was like, yeah, but even if I don't use the power side of it, even, even if I don't use the power amp of it, it's nice to have that option. I don't know when I'm gonna need 600 watts of power. So for me, I just wouldn't spend the extra money on the power amp side of things. And I would probably buy the toaster version. So an unpowered toaster is probably what I would buy if I was to really buy a Kemper again. And you could probably guess what I'm about to say next. I would not bother putting a Kemper through a guitar cab. For me, I just don't like how it sounds. I also wouldn't be in a rush to go and download a load of profiles. I just don't need 2000 profiles. I thought I did, but I really don't. Like I say, I use about three or four. So they are the things that I wish I knew before buying a Kemper. I know them now, and I really hope that this information maybe helps you out if you're also interested in buying a Kemper profiler. Maybe you also have a Kemper profiler and you've learned some things along the way and I didn't include them in this video, but you think others should know about them, definitely leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts. If you liked today's video, then you're more than welcome to leave me a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. And if you like it more than that, then you might wanna subscribe right here on Can't Afford To Record. I'll see you soon.